Hey guys, what's up? This is Lizzie Jane and you're tuning in to another episode of the XO Podcast. Today we have curator of Electric Hawk, artist manager, and so many more. Daryl, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, getting the weekend started. I'm happy to be here talking to you. Um, really looking forward to everything we're talking about here. So yeah. Absolutely. You're in Chicago, right? I'm in Denver now. Actually. You're in I've Denver. In, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you like it out there? Uh, I've just moved here about, uh, early July, uh, oh, wow, from Chicago. New. So it's been a kind of a big change. Honestly, mm-hmm. though, I've been so busy that I haven't left my room. So oh, it's like, it's kind Denver's of so pretty. You're in such a beautiful area. I was born in Gary, Indiana. So I have family between like Valpo, Indiana, Gary, mm-hmm. all the way into the city. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. But that's, that's super dope. Did you just decide, did you make the move because of kind of where you're moving within the music industry and it's like popping out there or just because you wanted a change of like scenery? Yeah. Um, so basically I, uh, my lease was kind of coming up, uh, in Chicago in like, uh, August and I had a a kind of a friend in one of the electric hawk community chats was Mm -hmm. looking for a roommate because his roommate was moving out of this house here in Denver. So I was kind of like stuck in like this like two week period where I'm like either I take this opportunity to move to like a really nice place right now or you know I just renew my lease somewhere in Chicago. And then you'll be stuck and, there for a while. Yeah and like the director of operations Mary so she's like my right hand is out here as well. She's she wonderful. Here. Yeah. Um, so it's like all most of our demographics out here um, a lot of our partners are out here <laughs> Basically, yeah, like the music connection out here is just like, it it makes total sense to move out here, Mm -hmm. even though it's during a pandemic. I mean, it's still though, it it gives us a chance to get settled in and still kind of like have like these, like maybe like get a lunch with like, um, you know. You're getting ahead of the ball. And I feel like there's something so special, especially when like our world is so interconnected online. It's there's something special having like an in-person relationship and an in-person communication, you know, yeah. source. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Denver is definitely one of those hubs where you're so close to the West coast too. It's just like a hop, skip and a jump to LA. Like you're in a prime location and it's just gorgeous out there. The weather is exactly. just, is it cold? Is it cold right now? Uh, I mean, we're from the Midwest, so okay, okay, it's, okay. It's like fall weather right now. It's like okay, so it's not. Yeah, it's it's all right right now. Um, I'm, I'm from Florida. Know. It's like a hundred. Oh yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. What were you saying though? I mean, funny enough, you say that with like the whole like you know in person kind of thing that you know with the, like the networking stuff. I mean, like tonight, like maybe like six hours from this call. Uh, I've got dinner with uh, the owner of EDM.com and yes. our distributor. So it's like yeah. little little stuff like that where it's just like, hey, you want to go get lunch? And it's it's really nice to have that quick connection with people. And And like the more that I've talked to people who have been experienced throughout like multiple facets of the industry, I've just realized that like genuine friendships go so much more than like professional acquaintances or like professional things where you're just like oh like how are you going to benefit me how can I benefit you but if you maintain that like real organic friendship and you're like oh shit like we actually have stuff in common like we like sports we like this we're really fond of this artist and you start to create that like organic chemistry between one another you'll just slowly realize that you're like more willing to put yourself on the line for that person down the road yeah, I agree. Um, it's it's been uh, strange because I mean the entire brand's kind of been built off of online. Like Absolutely. There's there's like thirty plus of us on the Electric Hawk team, and more than half of them I have yet to meet. Yet some of them have been on the team for a year now. So it's like, wow. you know, once we kind of make that physical connection and like you know finally meet in person, like I feel like it kind of further establishes that. And uh, absolutely, you know, um, absolutely, because you guys. How long has Electric Hawk been around? Because I was I was kind of starting to become familiar with you guys right at the start of quarantine. So like February, March. But how long have you been kind of curating this concept to to bring Electric Hawk into like the starlight within electronic music? So I started Electric Hawk, the idea about three years ago. Uh, it kind of just started as a blog. That's all it was. I would maybe write a post once a month and i would occasionally post something to twitter i didn't really have anything figured out i didn't know what i was doing at all it was the biggest like side side project i've ever had yeah and then kind of like a year passed on and i started kind of figuring out how twitter works and mm-hmm. by that i mean like 
shit posting. I still yeah. don't know how Twitter works, dude. I literally, <laughs> I have this app on my phone. I use TweetDeck and then I'll use like this other app from the app store that literally deletes some of the social apps off my phone for a certain amount of time because I just go on there sometimes and I'm just like, I can't play the shit post game today. Like I can't do it. And I just get <laughs> off. But no, that's, that's the way there's, there's definitely a method behind Twitter. Yeah. It's a, it's a branding thing. I mean, you don't have to shit post to be successful, but I mean, I, I personally love that's who I am. I'm, I'm goofball. But it's like dry humored. Yeah, it's I'm a goofball at heart, and I know I was just it's it's kind of experimenting with what gets the most engagement. Mm -hmm. So when I post things, I try and think, okay, what is our current following, our audience going to resonate about the most with? What are they going to share? And then I would kind of cut in actual content. So like for example, if I did like a write up on Lizzie Jane, and I did a post that was like a shit post that got like a hundred retweets, and then followed up with the write up about yeah. you. It, it trickles down like that engagement like 10 times are more traction and learn about you that's absolutely how, no that's that's sick because I, I know your biggest following right now is in twitter but it's starting to roll over to the different social media platforms but you were saying so you've got 30 people on your team ish or do you have uh, way more people than that staff writer wise 30 37 i think is the accurate number um sick. So everyone kind of has their own roles. There's staff writers, there's marketing managers, artist managers, um, there's director of operations, there's people who work on the label side, uh, there's people who do PR on the team, that director of PR, like Selby, for example, mm -hmm. and then she has like her assistants that also do PR, but yep. she oversees them. So everything's compartmentalized. Uh, you know, we're trying to restructure still at the moment and solidify everything but mm -hmm. that's you know it's 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 a unit so we all we all work together as well yeah and it's very a lot of people kind of on the consumer side don't understand like no matter what you're doing like you have to have a strong team and like if that yes. wheel isn't turning and like the unit isn't solid it takes like one small inchling to just like have the wheel fall apart it takes a village oh yeah and anything i remember when i first kind of got started i was like oh like these artists are up here alone. Like they're doing it themselves. Like da da da. da. And I was just so wrong. I was so yeah, wrong. They, they got a lot of people helping them out. So. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. Cause now it's like, now I work with a team of 10 plus people and it's like, I can't even imagine what I really think is cool about what you're doing is, is a lot of people artist wise and like label wise, they build up one thing and then they slowly build up the other things to match. But you guys kind of what I'm doing with the mix series as well as the podcast are kind of building everything together. And it's, and it's very cool to cohesively see, you know, everything from the PR side, the labels, your artists in artist management, as well as your blog site, slowly level up and slowly inch up. And I think that's definitely like a force to be reckoned with. And I think we'll see a lot of people doing more versatile things going into the future. I think quarantine has kind of opened our mind a little bit to be like, okay, this was the box that we're living in. And now it's time to think outside of the box on how we can reinvent it and kind of move forward and keep on trucking forward. And I've seen that from the producer side where I think half the music we're hearing now and seeing these different styles starting to innovate would not be here if it wasn't for quarantine. And, mm -hmm. and, but so, so when all of this stupid COVID shit hit and our country went into, you know, a national lockdown. Like what were you, one, were you in, in a state that I don't know what Chicago did? Were they completely locked down? Um, yeah, we were, there was panic like everywhere else. I mean, people yeah. were buying toilet paper up the ass. Oh and, my God. Like, yeah. It's, it was like chaos for like two weeks and like, there would be like rumors like, oh, uh, like, you know, you would just hear conversations like, you know, I, my cousin has a friend in the military who is gonna, who heard that they're gonna bring in the National Guard to, you know, the city and stuff like that. And like, it never happened. And then, you know, it happened it was, in my city. There was the National Guard literally like a mile from where I live. I was just like, holy shit. Like, I'm yeah. not leaving my house today. But yeah, it's just, it's wild. But from like the electric hawk standpoint, where you're like, okay, so this is happening. Cause I know you guys didn't get like, directly affected because you do kind of facilitate online but everybody in our industry got hit in one way or another so like how are you like okay team let's sit down what the hell are we gonna do well okay so i mean at the beginning of the year like january so like mm -hmm. we you know we i think the like the virus is kind of like 
so far distant in the news. Like you would hear like one case over in China, I think at this point. So like no one was worried about it. No one, ca- no one cared um, at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually kind of like we started to get booked for takeovers at festivals finally. Yeah. And what was the first had, festival you guys had a takeover at? The first one was going to be Asteria in Florida. Uh, Big. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. And we had a couple others. Uh, it was kind of, a uh, you know, be- because of COVID and we were, it was going to be planned through like the summer. Some of that were still TBA. Mm-hmm. Um, like we, you know, they still kind of wanted to proceed with going with it. And even this, like in August, by the way, like, so like, and, you know, it was not like a driving or anything. It was like, just like limited capacity mask, yep. not encouraged, not required type stuff. Yep. So we were, were like, count us out. We, we don't want to be part of this. Like, yeah. Yeah. not, we don't want to bag on people on social media for like that stuff anymore. Like it's, it's not us who we are, but I mean, like, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you're doing, if we want to do our debut show, it needs to be proper. It needs to, Absolutely. I want it to be like elbow to elbow packed, like our favorite artists, like it's it worth waiting yes. and then, then doing something half-assed. And I think a lot of people have that opinion right now, mm-hmm. whether it's artists, whether it's labels, like we personally pushed my P back to February because just of everything going on and, you know, to be able to tour around that time to support the release of the EP and, and yeah. And, and even though like certain States, um, you know, are getting back to normal. I live in Florida, like the venue that is in our hometown, the Ritz Ebor, you know, people are wearing masks and abiding by social distances, but I'll walk down the road and we're the only place that has masks on everyone else. It's just like a free for all. And it's just like, it's uncomfortable. It's kind of like, uh, uh, and, and, it's just worth waiting sometimes. Yeah. I definitely, definitely think that. But, but you guys decided to kind of what I said before we, we started mm-hmm. this recording was you guys came out on the other side of this. Now Man. that this is starting to come to a close, I would like to think, you know, in the next hopefully six months to a year, we will be sent me back to normal. Um, I imagine summer of 2021. It'll be like back and banging, but, so but yeah, you guys came out on the top end of this. And why do you think that is? So, I mean, we didn't want, you know, with a community that's been strictly growing, growing online and we've been doing everything we could to kind of get that to translate to a physical scene. Mm-hmm. We weren't going to let that stop us. I mean, we did in harmony that debut where we coordinated a huge marketing campaign to get everyone's eyes on us huge. and, you know, promote these underground artists we want to do something similar again and in honor of that with the same series. So we, you know, I kind of sat down and created what, like what I thought I watched like this, uh, this mini, like, sh- like a one night, uh, a live stream of, uh, these wave artists called Vibe digital. One of our some okay. Of yep. And they, it was like really dope production. I sat down in my living room. I put it on the TV. I was like, this is dope. I'm just watching it. I'm like on discord with my friends. Like there's like eight of us watching. It's like a watch party. Mm-hmm. And this is like, early february or so Uh, oh shit okay so this was before like shit hit the fan yeah so we're just thinking like this is dope like uh you know so maybe that that same weekend i just kind of sat down and thought what if we did something well coronavirus is starting to pick up Mm -hmm. i feel like at this Mm -hmm. point like mid mid february yep so i said what if we did something like this but on a much 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 larger scale so we thought of Harmony, uh, you know, something in name of the debut album that we did. Mm-hmm. Um, when we created Harmony Virtual Festival, uh, we started reaching out to a bunch of artists. It took us like two months to really put that together. And then all of a sudden the debut happened on April 25th and 26th. Um, I have no idea. We never dreamed of having artists like Blank, Buku, GMBU. Huge Sub-Dot. artists. When yeah. I saw like some of the line outs announced, including the one I was on, the one I was on had like, Lucid and Solly, it was a bunch of Wakan family. Mm-hmm. And and so it's just so dope because that, that's about as top tier as you can go without getting into like the upper echelon of people who just wouldn't do live streams. And it's- so cool. So intimate too. Uh, just another way to connect with people and the way that you guys did have your visuals. I think DJs get undercredited for their work a lot of the time. And it was very cool to bring them to the forefront. I like putting their name up there every single time. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I try and do my best to, sometimes I, we get sets from artists and they don't mention who did the visuals. I'm like, can you, we're, you know, like we're, we need the name of the visual Absolutely. artist. Absolutely. Like um, 
the funny thing about like harmony and like all that, I mean, it, it just became like an addiction for the team. Like it's the first one went amazing. Uh, it's, we had thousands of viewers at some points and we had just so much engagement on social media, so much crazy engagement afterwards, so much appreciation, that, like for bringing people together during a horrible time. Yeah. We got to pay some artists like, you know, at, at least like $130. Everyone got at least $130. On top I have of that. to interrupt you and say you are the only live stream I've gotten paid for. And like, <laughs> and, and, but, but it's so dope where I was like, like, I remember getting the Venmo from you guys and I text my managers and I was like, they actually paid us. Like they actually paid us money. <laughs> and no, but that was very, very cool because I mean, I, most live streams all the way up to the top without naming names are not paying people. So, I mean, so it was cool. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, I'm appreciative that we had a viewership that was really generous. I mm -hmm. mean, even like aside from like the, the artist donation pool where they just donated directly, directly to us and we yeah. split it to everyone. Like we were hearing people from like Recno and like other artists that like, they got like, like $600 plus in direct yeah. donations. Like they yeah. were like, I was able to pay rent off of that harmony stream. I'm like, this is crazy. Cause like you can't play shows, Which is uh, amazing. you know, it's yeah. awesome. So no um, so yeah. so cool and what what i would like to think down the line is like now you've established these connections with you know artists of that caliber and that that status and i'm sure they would be nothing but happy to come and play takeovers in real life and do this and potentially release with you guys and it's like it's such a cool thing and i think certain points in my you know career through quarantine and like things with you and other industry professionals that I know there's kind of like a silver lining where like overall yeah this sucks but there's certain things that have happened throughout it that would have never happened without this happening yeah it's it's weird because I mean like I don't know people ask me the question like how's how has this year been going and like everyone says they've been having a bad year realistically yeah and I, it makes me feel bad hearing about how you know, there's a lot of my friends that like, they, they can't go on tour. And like, mm -hmm. to this year was supposed to be like their big year. I'm sure yeah. for you as well. Like, yeah. it's, it, yeah, it sucks. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> it, it feels really um, gratifying that we were able to do something that made a difference for a lot of people. Uh, we were able to do something and persevere um, this year without setting foot on any live event, like setting Which all, is all year. Huge. And like, it's been really beautiful. I mean, we've had a lot of connections, like you said. Um, we're friends with all of these bigger artists now in this upper echelon that we never dreamed of. Like, I remember, like, three years ago, I, I wrote down on, like, a paper, like, this is who I want to work with. Like, I, you know, this yep. in the future. And, I like, have that list, too. Who do I want to get in the studio with 10 years from now? Who would I want to collaborate with? And, like, over this period of time, it's, like, having some of those things come to light that wouldn't have happened for maybe three or four more years is just huge. Mm. And, and the personal, everybody like is going in their life and they're and especially in this industry, they're going like 110 miles an hour all the time, especially with touring DJs. They're never home, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I feel like everybody was like, okay, put on the brakes, look up, look around you, like become creative, become innovative. And I really think when we, I want to know your take on this, but I, I think, when we go back to full circuit festivals, we will see different lineups. I think, I think that then like the same, the same names. I don't know though. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's really dependent on the booking agents that are still around at that time. And yeah. also who the promoters are. I mean, yeah. I, I think that the lineups will look a little bit the same, but not really because some talent, you know, um, every year, I mean, it goes with every year. I don't think we're going to pick up where we left off for sure. Yeah. Uh, because every single year, like, and every single new festival, there's so much a lot changes. of at least changes a little bit, you yeah. know? Um, of course, a lot of these festivals probably already had the lineup, you know, made before. Correct. Canceled and I know a lot of those got pushed over. A lot of them got pushed over. So I'm so, thinking maybe two to three years from now. Yeah, they're probably going to do their best to commit to that, you know, artist that they already had planned, which yeah. is fair. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, with like new events popping up, new promotions companies like happening and, you know, hopefully next year when things are finally safe and full motion again, which is going to be a fucking crazy time uh, as gonna well. It's going to be like, so crazy. The energy, <laughs> the energy is going to be unmatchable for the next like four years. 
people yeah. are going to take this, take this and just like every festival is going to sell out every, like, it's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. <laughs> I'm very excited because there's too. just so many underground producers and it's like not even underground, but just like smaller artists who, who necessarily don't maybe have the connections or have the previous, you know, you know how it goes. And they're just making such good music. And I feel like finally people are listening and they're, they're looking for full bodies of music instead of just a drop. They're, they're looking for something that they're interested in listening from beginning to end. And I love seeing all of these producers who may have been established beforehand as not using live elements start to use live elements, whether it's their vocals or, or bringing a drum pad on stage or doing certain things in their live streams that are bringing these other elements of like music into electronic music that's aside from just the US beat. And I think that's, I think that's dope. Yeah, I, I think um, it's it's a good direction that we're headed in. I mean, with the underground, it, it doesn't definitely like feels like it because that's also like one thing that I have to feel like I have to pay attention to is what are people looking for right now too. Um, and like, it, it really feels like the general community of fans right now in our space of uh, electronic music are starting to have their finger more on the pulse of the underground music. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really feel like it's underground as much anymore. It Correct. just feels like the names are more consistent now, you know, like it's a familiar name. They might, you know, there's more casual fans of the underground now than usual. And mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a really wonderful thing a year from now when uh, promotion companies really start, you know, putting together events that are based off of just like, you know, not what's not necessarily going to drive tickets, but what's going to put on a brand new experience for people, you know, that they're trying to reach. And I, I'm, yeah, I'm yes. really looking forward to that. Yeah, and that's where it's like you can really bring the whole team together from the visuals to the production to the artists. And I feel like everybody's just becoming so innovative where like Excision dropped that Subsidia mix on. Of course, he's got, you know, one of the best teams in the game, but he dropped the Subsidia mix. It's all 3D innovative and very VR and, and it's very it's very cool. And it's, it's going to be cool to see how they – integrate these things that they did over virtual streams into their live performances when they come back because they definitely have the means to do it. Um, so I've worked with a few of your artists on XO Radio. Was this part of the plan to manage artists? Where is this? Wait, wait I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, was this like part of the, your plan to start managing artists yeah. like in your, in your path kind of with Electric Hawk? Yeah, um, so this the management aspect started to happen and take form after the In Harmony debut album for the record label. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the whole reason why the record label was created and the debut album was put together is because I didn't feel like I was doing enough for this scene, mm -hmm. the artists, or like the fans. So yeah. I wanted to accelerate what we were doing. And I felt like having a record label and releasing music and kind of controlling that was kind of like you know, helping boost that even further and like make, make everything move faster and have more control and influence over what's, what you should, what people should be listening to and like helping artists like develop their careers. The next step after that, after we released the debut album, and we were starting to establish these relationships with artists at this point and the underground is, okay, I want to actually develop you more now. And we kind of got closer and closer, talks more like daily. We started planning their next release. And next thing you know, it's like, am I your manager? You're handling like, their yeah. day to day. Uh, <laughs> so, so it, it kind of just fell really organically together. Um, you know, we found someone we really believed in. We picked them, someone that we worked with before. And we were like, we're, we're doing this together. You know, we're, we're, oh, yeah. in. we're all in with this. And next thing you know, like more people on the team started following the lead and they were like, I want to do artist management too. I don't know what I'm doing, but I want to figure this out just like you. Yeah. And that's how we kind of started growing and growing and growing. So. All it takes is somebody to be ambitious. And a lot of people like don't understand. There's really, especially in this industry, there's no really A to Z step of like one, two, three, how to do things because there's so many ways that you can like achieve the, the end goal. Um, but artists, artist managers, I have to say are probably one of the, toughest jobs to do correctly within our industry and and a lot of it but like the basic necessities to do well are not these difficult you know technical understandings 
of like how to do this or do that or like you're working behind a production board or you're you're a VJ, you know, whatever. But it's just like being ambitious and being like integrated in the project that you're working for and just wanting it as much as the producer wants it. And I feel like when you have that relationship and connection, it's like unmatched. When you when you said like wanting as much as the producer wants it, yeah, like that's that's exactly what it is. I mean, I feel like a good manager I mean, I'm still learning from like some people that I really look up to as well. Uh, I'm talking to them, but like, I, I feel like a good manager, you know, one, not only like just incredibly believes in the project until, you know, like until the, like the end of time mm -hmm. um, Two, they need to kind of seek opportunities to push the artists to their best potential. The three, they're working for the artists. So they're not owning the artists. And I feel look like at you, people, look at you spitting facts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Of, I feel like a lot of people sometimes I, I'm not going to name names, but I, I do hear some horror stories from people. And like, it, it just seems like a lot of artists don't like the management that they like because they're getting pushed around by their management. And it's like, overall, that's not good for their mental health. And that's mm -hmm. not good for their creative direction either. If you force an artist to do something they don't want, they're going to regret that a year from now, probably. And it's, it's just not going to be a good trail. It's, you know, like it, the best words for that definitely just like you're, you're working for the artists you're not you're owning the artists here so correct oh my goodness correct yes 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 um that's that's awesome and i'm glad i got to hear you say that because i i just know a lot of people who are very ambitious about you know whether it's it's their friend or or they you know these are their goals to do this and i feel like there's a very fine line in being like being the parent being like the best friend and being the person like, hey, this is good for you. Hey, this isn't good for you. But at the end of the day, it's your decision as an artist. And like, mm -hmm. I'm going to be here to support you. And there's very few managers who I've met who kind of like complete that triangle. And when they do complete the triangle, it and it usually ends up being a very longevity, successful career. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's 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 fucking awesome. Um, but yeah dope uh back to your staff writers i think i have people message me on instagram every time i have a blog support which i have no idea why they message me and don't reach out to the actual blog but what what would you say if like somebody wanted to start supporting an artist track, you know, writing for a blog, writing for this or that? Like, do you look for experience? Do you look for like, hey, this is what I'm trying to cover? Like, what what would you say to somebody who was interested? So, I mean, I don't speak for other blogs for sure. But I mean, the thing about Electric Hawk is we're extremely grassroots. Mm -hmm. I started this not knowing a fucking clue what I was doing. Sometimes I still don't know what I'm doing, but I want to learn. Yeah. And I want to keep growing as a person to support the community that I'm working with. I'm looking for like-minded people like me then. So when people apply to be on the team, uh, whether it be for a writer, for anything else that they, they just want to be on the team. Uh, the first thing I'm looking for is do you like, are you part of this vision? Like, do you really care about the scene? Like, do you pair, do you care about this culture and do you want to grow? those are the most important things because like i would much rather show someone all the tricks and everything i've learned how to do everything correctly and how to grow and develop them if they really really want it rather than someone who is coming to us already knowing some things but just wanting the experience mm -hmm. you know i want Absolutely. them to be as hungry as me as as ambitious to support people so that's the most important thing and then the secondly, you need to be genuine. I mean, when it comes to like the writing part, especially too, don't just like write things. And People are so fake. Yes. Um, I hear about it from artist managers all the time. I just heard about it yesterday from a really big label manager yesterday. I mean, like sometimes they send out PRs where like a PR, like they do a write up on your, your track and then they send it out to blogs. A lot of blogs just copy paste it. And people hate that. Like, like, like more artist managers hate that because like I'm, I'm basically uh, paraphrasing it, but like, like this guy said, like, oh, I fucking hate when uh, they do that because that just shows me they're not listening to the music. Like they don't care. Like it's they don't care at all. And why is somebody gonna care who's coming to a, a site that has thousands of articles if the person writing it doesn't care? Yeah. So it, you can tell how it feels when the writing as well. With Electric Hawk, like 
we don't really have like strict requirements on people. We don't, you know, we're very flexible in everything. We're very loose. We're very patient. Um, but we also importantly tell people don't cover something if you don't like it. Mm-hmm. If even if it's like an important relationship we want to keep, don't cover it. Like it's, it needs to be you. It needs to be your voice. It needs to speak to you. Like you need to feel like you really love this track enough to let it flow uh, and write about it. Like it's, if you don't like it, don't even think about it. Don't stress about it. It needs to be genuine. Selby's done a few write-ups on some of my tracks and they're probably like one of my like most favorite ones because I have had that same. I love Selby. <laughs> yeah, she's great. I have had that same interaction with, with other blogs where it's like any coverage is good coverage. Like I'll take it all day long up and down the wall, but you can, you can tell when it's like, okay, we're just summarizing what you sent to us opposed to somebody listening to it and making, you know, comparisons or pointing out certain minute markers or pointing out this, you know, vocal influences and stuff. And, and it's really cool. And, and what I think is awesome too, is collectively your team is just very passionate about music. Like, did you start as like a raver? Did you start as like, Oh, like I love going to shows. Like I went to shows and then you're like, damn, can I do this as a job? I'm going to do this as a job. Um, or did you just know? I, well, I, I used to go to shows, uh, mm-hmm. I started going to shows like 2014 or so, okay. so some people might hear that and go, I've been going for 10 years, you know, yeah. the, but it's, but like, I, I've been going to shows since like 2014. Um, I mean, like I didn't, it didn't really hit me that I wanted to do something like creatively, um, in like electronic music. Cause I just, I love electronic music, uh, but I didn't, it didn't hit me until maybe like, 2016 when I started like drawing like the how the electric hawk logo is gonna look like and thinking of the names and stuff like yeah. that and like thinking like I'll start a blog and then it just escalated like I did not expect it to be That's so dope. doing everything we're doing now I thought it was just gonna be blog and now we're doing everything <laughs> so. and it's so crazy how it's just like any road and any like what I kind of say is like if you see somebody just pop out of nowhere they're either going to disappear as quick as they popped up or they've been doing this for like a decade and you just didn't know about it. And, and there's just the road and the journey is so long, but it's like, it's always my favorite when I just did this with mode step earlier, when I go to an artist's profile and I just click shuffle and you get songs from like 18 years ago, 16 years ago with them just kind of like in a band, then going over to like early dubstep, then just like developing their sound. And now they're just fucking insane. And it's so cool to see that progression within labels and label releases and blogs and blog coverage and like how you'll go from, you know, you starting a blog to having a festival takeover to running your own festival. And, and the progression of it is just like endless, like there's no ceiling. And I think that's really cool about this industry because you look at like corporate America, like America's based on capitalism and shit, but like, there's always a ceiling. You're like, Oh, like you can only get here. But I feel like in our industry, like as long as like you yourself are usually the one to put the harness on and be like, Oh, I can't go higher than this. But if you take that off in this industry, you can just keep going and you can just keep innovating and you can just keep doing that. And by the time, like, as long as you surround yourself with like good, hardworking people that have the vision in mind, you're at the top and you have no idea like that, how, how the fuck you got there. And, and I think that's like really, really dope. It's, it's, it's really cool to see the progression. Cause I started going to shows in 2015 when I graduated high school and I went to Electric Forest by myself as my graduation present. And then a year later, I was like, yeah, I'm done doing this until I can play on stage. And I was like, to figure out, <laughs> just figure it out. And, and I feel like there's like a point where, like, did you ever turn around and you were like, damn, okay, this is like becoming something like I need to take this seriously. Yeah. Um, so you said you went to Forest 2016? Uh, 2015. 2015? Yeah, oh, I was 18. Okay um 15 was the one i went to too it was my first forest and that mm-hmm. was like solidified like at least camping life festivals. changing oh my yeah. god i was kind of nervous because i was like man i was so new i had gone to two raves i'd gone to borgor oh, and i oh, fucking hated it <laughs> fucking hated it and then i went to rl grime and i was like oh my god this is the best shit ever and then i went to electric forest i was like i don't have anybody to go with i'm just gonna go by myself i took a bus up with people from like tampa and we made it and I just like camped by myself and I was just like, this is it. Like, this is so cool. And like coming from like a metalhead, like kind of rock community, 
coming into this, I was like, oh my God, people actually talk to each other. People are nice. Like, and, and I feel like we've kind of like lost that sometimes on like social media and stuff. But I feel like when we're at shows, it always kind of the energy is more exuded. And I get that everybody's in like a weird ass place right now, but I hope when everything starts to get back to normal, that energy will hopefully like shine through because the EDM Twitter community is just like fucking massive, but there's still like good people in it. Like there's definitely good people. I I think post pandemic, I mean, or post once shows are, you know, the common opinion is it's okay to be at shows again. Like everyone's there in full force again. Um, I feel like people are going to have more of an appreciation as well, not only for the live event aspect, but also just having that human connection with each other. I mean, like in, in person, like, wow, like even like going to drive-in shows, like, it's just like, you, you can't just not wander around or you're going to get yelled at by security. Yeah. Um, or, but like, if you're at, you know, a live show again, it's like, you can like meet up with like all these groups of friends and all these pockets. And it's like, I'm low. I'm underneath the unicorn on the left side of the speaker. Like, it, you know, I miss that feeling. No, and everyone- I'm by the totem pole. I'm by the totem. Come find me by the totem. <laughs> oh my God. No. And I just, I miss, yeah, I just miss that energy period. It's just mm-hmm. something that's completely unmatchable and, you, and you're correct. Like, it's kind of like what we were talking about earlier with the half acidness. And I feel like that's what we're going through now, but it, there will be an end. There's always an end. And it will start to get back to normal. And that's when I feel like you're going to really start to see the bigger players come in and just start to flourish. And like, you'll have your takeover and you'll have this and that. Cause I know Asteria got moved cause I'm on the Asteria lineup. It got moved to next spring. So are you guys still talking with him about potentially being involved or you're, you're just going to hold out until everything's like normal, normal, normal. Yeah. We opted out. Yeah. Um, I mean that they, they wanted to do August and um we decided i remember that yeah they wanted to do august and they said we needed to confirm now or we're off the lineup and i we like it's that's just their business decision and we were like you know that that sucks but you have to do what's best for you and your team for for sure so i mean i hope for the best for them though i I hope that everything turns out fine for everyone uh Mm -hmm. it, it is just uh but yeah, I mean, that's just an industry thing that happened there. So yeah, um, it happens all the time. Yeah. Uh, so we were talking about this earlier too, before we started our conversation here. Um, the future, like, what do you see happening in the next two years? Like, what are some of your goals? Like your big goals? You're, you're, you're also working with Cole Jackson too, right? He's the artist you personally manage. Yep. Dope. Dope. Mm-hmm. dope. Um, so for the future, I mean, I, I want to keep looking for opportunities for the two artists that I manage, Comic Creation and Cole, but also it, being kind of like the founder and still like the, you know, like the, the head of Electric Hawk, like I, my most, like my main interests are how, what can I do to drive this platform higher? Because overall it's going to impact how everyone else's success is on the platform as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if our platform is bigger, it's going to impact the success of all the other artists that are related to us as well. So that's kind of like the vision for, you know, it's always going to be the vision for me. Um, with Electric Hawk in the next, I'd say, six months or so, which is kind of long term. I mean, this year's going by super fucking fast. So um, fast. Yeah. I like walked into the grocery a month ago and I was like, it's not Halloween. Why are Halloween things out? And this morning <laughs> I like dressed up my dog as a ghost and I took her to a fucking Halloween thing. Um. But yeah, I mean, for the future of six months, next six months, like we, after the finale of In Harmony or Harmony Festival, like we, you know, we decided it was time to kind of end that series on a great note. And I'm very happy with how it ended, but we kind of wanted to look towards starting on new projects. So there was a month where we were kind of like tying up like old projects that we've been putting on the back burner for a while, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to like improve the how you know how efficient we are as a team and like picking up these little things and just standardizing the entire organization and like all of our content um after that was done uh we decided we were kind of like running out of like things to look forward to so i'd say about like two weeks ago or so um i had like a crazy idea or it was like a week and a half ago i had like a crazy idea like at four in the morning it's this is how in harmony started this is how harmony the, the best the best ideas yeah, so I got up, 
started pacing around my room. I started spamming essays to the team chat on this is my idea. This is how it's going to happen. Uh, you know, this is, this is what it's called. And I, um, I can't go into details yet because it's a secret. No, you're fine. You're fine. But I'm, I mean, I'm very excited. So, so yeah. So why did you, you were just done with Harmony Fest or did you wrap it up? Cause you see live events starting to come back. Like, like, why'd you wrap it up? We felt like it was time. I, I, I just had that itch. I mean, the, the, some of the, the, the couple last of the Harmony Fest virtual festival series events, like the viewership was kind of going down, but I also was noticing that it was going down immensely for a lot of other people as well. Oh, well, so, it correlates with things opening back up. Yeah, that, that too. And also just uh, what, like the word that people are using is stream fatigue, I think. And even then, like I, I have personally had to do like technical ops for all the Harmony virtual festivals. So that's like so many hours and nights of just staring at a screen and I'm stream fatigue. Like I, yeah. I feel like, you know, I, I'm like, God, I'm so tired. <laughs> it's watching long days, dude. Yeah. I only did like, I did like five XO streams and they were only like seven to eight hours long. But like the shit that you guys did two days in a row for like 12 hours at a time. I'm like, uh, uh, no <laughs> way. I'm over here sitting on my dryer. Cause I've got my roommate playing video games and I'm like trying <laughs> to get the best internet connection. I'm like, don't lag, don't lag, don't lag. But where did you guys, um, for that, did you guys like meet up with somewhere like that had like great internet connection or did you like get better how like how do you do that because I feel like that's so nerve-wracking when you've got x amount of people watching and it can just like cut out right there right here. oh my um, god I did it in my room uh, in my bedroom in Chicago I did it in my bedroom here um so yeah I mean it, it's it's wild how it's put together I mean the it's so much effort that goes into putting these together I mean you have all these communications with like dozens of artists and like the meeting deadlines and being on top of them and make sure you get everything in time. And like, it's up to the last minute, um, getting all your assets and artwork done, uh, all your promo out. Um, and then like running the stream, you have to organize everything and just know how to, you know, navigate through OBS yep. properly and like be attentive. Like you said, if there's like a hiccup at all, it's really stressful. The first harmony we had, my internet went out, like, for like five minutes during yeah. the group reset, I felt horrible because uh, but it's like it's out of your control. Like it's out yeah. of your control. Ugh. There was like a thousand. There was like twelve hundred people watching or something like that, though. So I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> so, I remember when Grizz raided the stream. It was the oh, night that I played, and he was just like, "I was like, what the fuck just happened?" I was like, "The the viewers just like quadrupled. Like, what's going on?" And then there were like three thousand people in your stream, and I was like, he, "Holy shit." That was such a validating moment of this year. I mean, you know, we like I, we we our whole team's like just been huge fans of Grizz. We've been following him. Like, it's kind of like a foundation of like the sound that Electric Hawk was built off of too. Like we, you know, a lot of the like these highlight artists like are what got us into the scene. So it kind of embodies what Electric Hawk is too. So Grizz is kind of a part of that. Mm -hmm. To see him like tweet out the link to the stream and like rate us with like, five thousand people was just like what the fuck is going on You're right uh, i would that's what i was saying i was like holy shit i remember i was with my boyfriend and i was like i have chills right now because like that is so huge for them like that it's huge it's like it's a it's like one of those moments where like not a lot of people get it but like your team and other artists who like understand the whole conceptualization of how it works gets how important that is for him to do something like that when like he didn't have to do that you know mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's it was a really a uh, uh, magical moment. I mean, it it's been a really wild ride putting it together. Uh, but I guess overall, to like just putting like wrapping up like harmony, it was just a lot of work. We felt like we wanted to just start focusing on the next project, and we wanted to end it off because we felt like it was kind of starting to simmer out. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to just end it with a bang, like it's yeah. just, well, all our end it while you're high. Yeah, and then the next time it comes back that virtual word won't be there like it's it's gonna be harmony festival not harmony virtual festival like we're you know we're looking at uh ways to get that started up now um as over the next year or so we're hoping to do that in 2022 um Yay. somewhere in the midwest probably yep. so yeah i mean like it's it's the long game but when that comes back uh i'm hoping it's, it's just as chaotic and it's just as fun as the twitch chat for harmony virtual oh Wars. absolutely can you imagine the twitch chat being in real life <laughs> like, uh, that's what, what a shit show oh 
Uh, Someone, one of the viewers uh, is, he's like a really awesome person, uh, like EH fam on Twitter, uh, suggested mm -hmm. that we should get like an LED board where people can text. And I was literally just thinking that in my mind. I was like, what if they like set that up next to the stage and then they had the chat running down? It'd be crazy. I, my mom was like, she, cause she watched me play. She was like, I can't type in the chat. I don't know what anybody's saying. And she's like, what's poggers? What's a simp? What's this? And I was just like, oh mom, I don't know. Just watch it. Just watch it. Uh, no, but it, it's definitely, it's a lot of people don't, become successful at having that community like mentality of people who aren't really involved in electric hawk like you you were able to bring in complete strangers because of the artists that you guys were able to book and they were able to like hop in the electric hawk family just like that and feel like they fit in and to like succeed at that is just like huge because even people can go to events sometimes and they still feel isolated and they, they yeah. feel like they don't fit in and i think it was so cool with how the chat was integrated and how you had people like Mary and Selby kind of running the chat and making sure everybody was just like shot tequila sip this that and and <laughs> it was you know and and it was cool it, it was definitely cool but I'm excited when are we going to hear about the new project do you have like a date announcement yet for people so, to look forward to I mean a hint for one is we're working with uh, one of our biggest inspirations and my biggest inspirations. Uh, I think I kind of kind of know know who it is just because you talked about it, but I'm not gonna say anything. Okay. So go. we're putting together something with them, hopefully in December. Uh, awesome. And that's that's the tentative time where we're putting it out. Um, and the other project is I want to keep that in the unknown. I yeah, can't yeah, give yeah. No, you're much fine. about that you're but fine. it's it's definitely our most ambitious thing we've ever 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 done so we're, we're excited for that that's that's coming in the next also a couple of months too so well that's how you grow you know it's uh it's doing stuff that makes you feel kind of uncomfortable where you really know that it's being uncomfortable is a good is a good kind of way to feel because it means that you're challenging yourself to be better and then one day you won't be uncomfortable doing the thing that used to make you uncomfortable and then you'll do something else that makes you uncomfortable yeah and that's how you know you keep leveling up and stuff but thank you so much for coming on today i greatly appreciate it um everyone please go follow electric hawk i will have all of their links down in the description of the bio of the video as well as the wave file Thank you so much for coming on EXO Podcast. I really hope to meet you in person before I'm 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lizzie.